Hi, I'm Salman Nafis and I'm here with another very useful video about how to use planar tracker. Planar tracker can be used to track the movement of any flat surface like walls, floor, billboards, mobile phone screens and thus be able to add in any text, video or image on that surface. I'm going to make it super simple and easy for you to follow along and I'm also going to share some prerequisites that you should be aware of before you plan to track something. My statistics tell me that more than 98% of the people who have been watching my videos have not been subscribed to the channel. So consider subscribing, this is the only way to support me so I could keep producing more useful videos like this. So without further ado, let's jump in and let me show you how it's done. So we have this clip that I want to track and I want to put some text on the right side of these windows on this building. So let's take this into Fusion by going straight into Fusion page. We have two nodes, Media In 1 and Media Out 1. Now to track the surface of this building, we need to add a planar tracker node. We can simply go over here to the effects and search for a planar tracker node, or we can select this node and press Shift Spacebar to bring up this node selection tool. Let's type in planar tracker and here is our planar tracker. Let's add it. It's automatically connected between these two nodes. Make sure that the planar tracker node is selected and the operation mode is on track. Now we need to set up a reference frame for this to track. And we're going to find out a frame that is completely straight in perspective. And if we look at this area, I want to track this area out. And I think around here is the best reference frame because it gives us a proper frontal image of this building. Selecting the reference frame is a crucial thing in tracking. You should be tracking things that are not reflective in nature because if you're tracking reflective surfaces, it's going to follow the reflection. You also don't want to track an area that has people or cars on top of it. Now, in this case, I think this is a very nice reference frame and I'm going to now draw a shape that is going to set the area for us to track. So I'm just going to roughly draw a shape, click, then go down, click somewhere around here, one point around here, one here, and then we'll just close this pattern. Once this is closed, we have a reference area selected. Now we need to set that reference time on this planar tracker. Now, if we have a look at this area, our reference frame is 148. And I just need to press this button so that it could know that this is my reference frame. So my area is set to 148 reference frame. Now this is a crucial step. If you don't set the reference time over here, it's not going to track forward. Now the next thing that we need to look at is what type of motion do we need to track? You have a lot of different options. You have translation, which is just going to track the X and Y positions. Translation and rotation, which is also going to track the rotation. Translation, rotation, scale. If you have scale movements in the shot, then translation, rotation and scale is going to be better. Then you have affine plus shear and then you have perspective. Since the shot that we have is also changing in perspective, I'm going to select the perspective mode to track. And once these things are done, I'll just come up over here and I'll select track to end. The tracking has started. It's doing a pretty nice job. Now, once this is done, you can see some lines appearing up over here. These are the keyframes that it has put for the movement of the surface. We need to track the area that is behind that reference frame also. We can bring the playhead physically to the reference frame or we can just press go over here, which is going to take us back to that reference frame. Now we need to track backwards. So go on tracking, track to the start, and this is going to track backwards. So as you can see, it has done a pretty nice job in tracking the whole surface. Now, the most important and the most difficult part of the tutorial is done. Now we just need to add in any text, logos, videos, or anything that we want to put onto this wall. In our case, we're going to put in text. So I'm going to grab this text plus from here, and I'm just going to attach this text plus to the planar tracker. Now let's bring this text in the left side viewer by pressing this button, and let's type in our text. I would also like to bring the line spacing a little closer and I would also like to change the font. Now once this thing is done, we need to go to the planar tracker and we need to enable the text so that we could see it in the screen. 
Now I'm going to just put it up on a single view monitor so that we can see a bigger image. And in the operations board, we need to select corner pin now. Once we select that, we see a weird kind of a square over there, which we can move around. And now we're going to set it up so that we could have a proper aspect ratio and a place where we want to stick that text. Now, this is a very crucial step because you need to get the exact angle so that the text could look good. I'm just going to increase the size of the text a little bit so that we could see it a little better. Something like this. Now, if you're worried that the alignment of the text is not proper, what you can do is that you can come up over here to the corner pin one and you can select show grid. This is going to show you the grid and it's going to make it much easier for you to put up the points properly. Once we are happy with that, we can just simply turn off the show grid option. And if we play it forward, it is properly tracking with that thing. Just to make it look a little more realistic, go into the planar tracker and in the corner pin one, we need to change the merge options. So in the apply mode, you can just, you know, try out any other apply mode that you like. In this case, I think overlay is going to do a very nice job. So I'm just going to select overlay. And as soon as I've selected that, you might see some of the texture of the building appear back in. And then we can also adjust the gain just to make it a little less in opacity. And something like this looks a little more realistic. And now if you play it, you can see that the text is properly being tracked with the building. Now there's one thing that you might experience if you move the text around and you know you take it outside of that area that you have selected, it might cut it out. So you want to select an area that is properly in that zone in which you want to put in the text. Now comes the second part of our tutorial. We're going to use the same planar tracker tracking information and we're going to use that on a PNG image. So I'm just going to delete the link by coming up over here to the blue line. And then we're going to go into the media pool. So I would like to use this one and just drag that in. It's a PNG file and let me just rename it. Now you need to add the output of that PNG into the input, the green input of the planar tracker. Once this is done, we can see the image on top of this building. Now, one thing that is not right about it, as we discussed it before, is the aspect ratio of this image. So we would like to readjust that through the corner positioning. So I'm just going to go back to the planar tracker, click on it, and we're going to, you know, rearrange it so that the aspect ratio is kind of correct. I'm roughly going to figure it out. Let's also turn on the show grid option so that it's a little proper. And this looks pretty nice. I'm just going to turn off the show grid. And now I would like to make it look a little more realistic since this apply mode is not looking good. So I'm going to go back to the planar tracker corner pin one and we're going to change it from overlay to let's try out multiply. I'm just going to select that. I think it looks a little better like to just bring down the gain a little bit somewhere around here. I think it looks much more realistic. We can still see the texture of that building through the image. If you would like to increase or decrease the size of an image or a video, you need to add in a transform node. For text, we could just do that in the text node itself. But for the PNG or a video, we need to add in a transform node. So let's add that in shift spacebar transform and we can just give it a little bit of a size. We can increase the size, decrease it, or we can just move it around the way we want it to be. Now, the good thing about uh, a PNG image on top of a planar tracker with a transform is that it can even go beyond the limits of the corner positioner that you have set. Now, in our case, I don't need the transform node, so I'm just gonna delete that. One more thing to make the tracking look more realistic is to turn on the motion blur. So for that, we're just gonna go into the planar tracker select that go into the settings and you have a motion blur option over there just turn that on you can also set up the quality you can change the shutter angle i'm just going to keep it to the default one right now this is definitely going to make the rendering a little slower but we can go back into the edit page we can turn on our render cache once it turns to blue we can play it back in real time and this is how our tracking looks I hope you liked the video, consider subscribing to this channel, drop a comment down below and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss the latest updates about some useful DaVinci Resolve tutorials on this channel.